What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. There are lots of resources available for particular industries. The first place I would look is the Industry Skills Council website for your vocational area. There are 10 or 11 Industry Skills Councils, so you just need to look at that website and see what resources they've developed. You can also look at a website called LiteracyNet. It's a government website and is a repository for a lot of language-adjusted training resources in all sorts of vocational areas. One other website you can go to that gives really good accessible information about literacy and numeracy strategies for vet trainers is a website called Taking the Lead. Now it's auspiced by Service Skills Australia which is the retail and hospitality industry skills council but the information on that website is relevant to everybody, relevant to all vet trainers. There's a series of very good DVD clips on literacy and numeracy for vocational trainers on a website called Ideas That Work. If you Google Ideas That Work, you'll find that website and see a series of clips which support vocational trainers in getting some strategies for their classrooms. If you're a trainer in a big TAFE, it's easier because often there's a specialist department, a literacy and numeracy department, who can offer you support. They might send a team teacher into your classroom. If you're in a smaller organisation, what are you going to do? You can access outside services. Your organisation might hire a consultant. It's important for everyone to learn how to use the Australian Core Skills Framework. There's lots of freely available professional development for vocational trainers to learn about literacy and numeracy in their training. We set a professional development calendar for 12 months ahead with all the dates locked in for all of the trainers. And our expectations are when a trainer comes to our team, brand new, in their trainer's contract, they have to undertake professional development. We're always stretching their skills, so they're um, keeping their currency up to date as much as possible. We attend a lot of different LL&M workshops, and they just have guest speakers in who are experts in the field, and they look at how we can incorporate it into our training courses, how we can um, package everything together, how we can unpack units to find the LL&M within the unit. So these conferences just help trainers to develop these skills and look for what's underneath. Once I came back from the conference, I then took what I gathered from the conference and then presented it to the whole training group. So although we only send one or two trainers on Pacific conferences, we, we ensure that that information is fed back to the whole team as a whole. One easy thing that trainers can do is access their, their training networks and find someone a bit more experienced than yourself. You can obviously pose a question to them or a case study of a student where you've got barriers to learning engagement, literacy and numeracy and they can come back with a real life case study of how they've overcome that situation. So it's a great way of sharing resources that are free. Find a buddy or someone to mentor you in your training, someone to give you advice and tell you the kinds of things they've been doing. It's really good to belong to networks and, uh, and share strategies with others. Because not every trainer is obviously going to be good at English and maths. So you identify champions within your team and those champions assist other trainers to overcome barriers in those particular subjects.